is over um, a 2.4 mile swim for 3.8 kilometers, 112 mile bike, which is 180 kilometers, or a 26.2 mile run, which is 42 kilometers. So Hawaii is probably one of the hardest Ironmans in the world, not only because it's a world champs, but it's, um, it's ridiculously hot. It's on Kona, the island, uh, which we ride through lava fields. So all that radiating heat, it's, it's, it's torture. Um, and then you also have to run <laughs> through that same radiating heat when it's the peak of the day. To me, it's not the why, it's the, the, <laughs> the voice that always pops up in my head. And this is still to this day is, oh, I can do that. <laughs> and I can do it better than anyone else, which is kind of not always the case. Um, but it, it was for triathlon. Like I really believed I could do it better than anyone else. So I was convinced I could win the world championship. Um, and I said that in, an, an MB, in, in my first NBC interview before the race in 2007, my first ever Ironman, I had an interview with NBC and I said, I'm gonna win this race one day. I don't know when, but I'm gonna win it. And then, you know, fast forward, you know, six years later, five years later, I finally won it. When, when I raced in Kona, I mean, I went through so many highs and so many lows. Like the race is nine hours. And I want to say every, at least at one time an hour, I was at a low point where I was like, oh my gosh, I could stop now. I wish this pain would end. I am so hot. I am tired. My legs hurt. Like all those sorts of things that go through your mind. Even like I remember before the start of the race, I was like, oh my gosh, what am I doing here? Here we go again. You know, there's, there's such an overwhelming sense of nervousness and anxiety. And it's almost like, you just want this to stop. I'm like, why am I doing this to myself again? And then when the gun goes off, like all that stuff disappears and you like get into the race mode and then you just become tunnel vision. At least I do I become tunnel vision. And, uh, and so many things like around me, I don't see people, I don't hear people. Like I just become in this like tunnel of my zone, the athlete zone, they like to call it. Um, and yeah, I mean, as, as much as the, they, there's those lows along the way, I had also had equally, I had highs, you know? So a low would be, um, I mean, I had a, a penalty on the bike course, um, four minutes I had to wait there and I'm just knowing that the gap between me and the other athletes was getting further away. Um, and then a high point would be when I run up to second place and then when I run up to first place and then all of a sudden I'm in the lead and I'm like, holy shit, you know, this is it. This is where the, the race is going to be won and, and I can make that happen. I can win this race. Um, and I just, I just, you just kind of roll with it. It's kind of like you just get over one down point and then you find a high point and you kind of just following this pattern throughout the whole race. Down Polani, which is like the steepest part of the um, the run course, and it comes at like mile twenty three or four or five, something like that. It's like right in the last, and your legs have there's nothing left in your legs. There's so much fatigue, um, and it's all coming to the surface now. It's manifesting in the muscles, and they're really sore and they're cramping. and And I'm just like trying to run as fast as I could down Polani and just hoping that I don't collapse down. I mean, my legs are literally about to give way. Um, and then you get down to that corner and then you start, you turn away from the finishing line. Like you can see all the crowds, you can hear the finish line, you can hear the, the, the mic, the guy on the mic. It's, it's all of a sudden all this great, loud, exciting noise. You start moving away from it and you go down this really quiet spot and you're like, oh my gosh, I just want this to end. I just want this to end. I just want this to end. Just make it to the finish line. Just make it to the finish line. And then you turn this corner and then this is like last straight to the finish line and you start seeing like the crowds pick up and then the noise and, and it's insane. It's like that vision where you have all these athletes trying to come and talk. Well, it's not athletes. These spectators are like all trying to touch you and give you high fives and cheer you on and this everything's so loud and you can fit here the finish line and all these drums and this energy and just like like I started running faster at this point where I was the most depleted in my whole day I had this energy and I started going faster towards the finish line um, 
yeah, it was incredible. It was so fun. And then there's like the motorbike in front of me and, and you know, trying to get all the people out of the way and so I could get to the finish line. And, and it's, it's kind of surreal because you realize afterwards, like they're all there cheering me on. Like these people are all there for me. They want to see me finish. It's, it's kind of amazing. Like everything ends and like you're standing here, you're like a, like a deer in headlights. Like, okay, you actually, I thought to myself, like, what do I do now? Okay, so, and I, I, I was doing this um, role for um, ALS, um, the Blazeman Foundation was a charity I was supporting at the time. And so I went back along the finish line, I rolled over um, and Caroline Stefan was super close, so she wasn't too far behind. So I waited for her and, um, and then I had an interview and I saw a third place finish. And then my sister was there at the finish line, some friends, and I saw them. And then my sister and I, we walked um, away out of the finishing area. And I remember I was like, then it just dawned on me. It's like, holy shit. I actually probably swore, I probably said, fuck, I won. Like, all of a sudden it was like, oh my gosh. Like, it happened. I did it. I won. It, 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 and I remember my, my, my sister, I, was, I just grabbed her, I was like, her name is Melissa, I said, Melissa, fucking won. <laughs> and I couldn't believe it. And, uh, and then we got on the phone to my parents and my parents were watching it with, um, with some friends uh, through um, Skype, like a video feed. Um, and so it was, yeah, oh, yeah. It was a pretty incredible moment.